see me? I can see you. You're a little pixelated, but just fine. What time is it there, first of all? We're very far. Um, <laughs> it's 1040 at night. We did not change our clock. So luckily, earlier than it usually is for me here. But um, I'm only half asleep. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad it's not like three in the morning or something. That'd be a bit rough. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have major, major FOMO. Uh, when I, I actually, Mark told me, Mark Sternberg, the founder of Brand Innovators, a few weeks ago, told me what you were doing, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that is incredible!" How did this come about? Especially, I mean, it's a freaking pandemic right now. You are in the Maldives. How did this happen? Um, so the property needed, um, some help with marketing strategy, um, cause a few people were away for a little while and, um, they asked the Hilton corporate office in Singapore who asked the Hilton corporate office in DC, who said, I know the exact right person because, um, previously I was the senior director of brand marketing for, um, uh, for luxury and lifestyle for Hilton. So working on Waldorf Astoria, Conrad. Um, and uh, so I was able, I worked on this property from headquarters and I knew a lot about it and I was able to jump in quickly and work on the strategies that they needed, the storytelling strategies um, from ideation to execution. So a lot of it was right time, right place. And I spent a lot of 2020, you know, volunteering for the elections in Georgia and hosting brand innovators conferences and doing a lot of things that I was really passionate about, partially because I did not want to go back to full-time work. Um, and I knew that there was some adventure out there waiting for me. And then mm -hmm. this popped up. So you know, you gotta wait for what you believe is right. And the Maldives have actually been relatively, um, for the most part, not untouched by COVID, but the mm -hmm. way that this country has handled COVID has been incredibly effective. Like all staff here are quarantines before coming onto property, like we're fully masked also. I'm in an overwater villa right now. Everyone staying here is in an overwater villa. The properties aren't that large. There's never a time where you're engaging in a lot of guests. It's not like Las Vegas where you go to the pool and it's like big crowds. Um, so it's a pretty safe place to be during COVID. And we've actually been at near full capacity or full occupancy um, for quite some time. So wow. Uh, and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Every the success. Every every uh, every individual place has their own pool, right? Can you, if yeah. it was daylight, I would give you a tour. <laughs> Show um, me the tour. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Amazing. Yeah. So, do, yeah, so do no, you guys as staff really get like incredible. an extra room? Are you in like the side room, like the room that didn't get rented, or how does that work? Uh, no, I'm lucky as a consultant that I'm I'm in a villa right now, but there's also a staff area so um it, this is not normal to be living <laughs> this in isn't where you live <laughs> like this is this is yeah i'm living a dream right now this nice. property so like is unbelievable it's relatively new They're like the largest some of the largest villas in the maldives like the pools it's like a full-size pool um it's it's mm -hmm. yeah it's stunning yeah it's funny i actually did my research yesterday and actually now i follow it on instagram this is my wonderlust, absolutely. And I, I see the chandelier and I was like, I actually know what that looks like from the pictures. So yeah, those those villas are outstanding. Oh, yeah, 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 right now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love, I mean, you have like the overwater, like you could like look down and see under the water. <laughs> That's so amazing. Oh, how cool. Yeah, in the bathroom, there's the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, I'm, oh, man. I feel very fortunate right Living now. Living the dream. I know that I am you not normal. And I also love the work that I'm doing. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, I feel very fortunate. Yeah. I would just say it's like a 15 hour live cast and just stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, the sunrise is, is pretty incredible. And also yeah. to have worked on the, the launch and the opening of this property from the corporate office and now mm -hmm. to actually be here and to be working on the marketing strategies is, like a really unique position to be in um, because I came to hospitality from e-commerce 
Um, and while there's a lot of similarities, you know, I was doing for Bobble Bar brand partnerships and customer experience and influencer marketing mm -hmm. and all these things. And a lot of it translated over, you know, almost exactly to hospitality, a new industry, but there's the core of marketing is marketing. Um, mm -hmm. But then to be able to get on property experience, it was actually one of my goals in 2020. But like you're saying, it's COVID, like not the most ideal time to get on property yeah. experience. Uh, yeah. But then to be able to do it here and to see how a property is run, the operational side, you know, even marketing budgets at a property like this are, you know, with the average daily rate here can be, you know, $3,000. Like it's Oof. an ultra high net worth audience. And so, Mm. To learn how a property works at a place like this is is definitely um, a gift. That's super cool. Well, I know you didn't get here without some sacrifices. You had to make some tough decisions. Um, you actually wrote a, a fantastic piece that I read that kind of gave me a little bit of intel. Um, tell me about what you had to go through to get here. Honestly, leaving my puppy back in the United States was the Aww. hardest thing. Um, that was definitely the most challenging piece. Um, and also I had just moved to Atlanta, um, because I, I moved to Washington DC for the role at Hilton, but one of my big learnings, um, at the beginning of 2020, although I knew right away, I was in New York for 13 years and I never felt quite at home in DC. Um, while I absolutely loved Hilton, DC was, a, it's a very serious city. And so it was a challenging place, I think. Um, to transition to and I love most everywhere I go so I was surprised by that so I moved to Atlanta and I was just starting to set roots um, in Atlanta and network and meet people and so it was sort of a breath for me to pick up and leave um, but I think that these types of opportunities are once in a lifetime and figuring out like does it align with goals like I you know just sat with friends and said I want on property experience and this is the number one property in the entire Hilton portfolio to get on property experience and to actually have a marketing budget in 2021 in hospitality is very unusual. And so, you know, this is a really amazing opportunity to be able to do this. And so I think that, you know, with any job, there's sacrifices on a personal level, like, to come from the corporate office and to go to a property and hospitality, it's not necessarily like the straight path you, mm -hmm. that one might be looking for. More often it's actually going from property to corporate. Uh, but I wanted to round out my career. And as a storyteller and a marketer, like I know how this fits into my story, even if it's not the most obvious choice um, or decision for a lot of people in their career. Like there's no way I'll look back on this time and think, ooh, like maybe the <laughs> title was wasn't right. Yeah. Right, exactly. And, you know, there, I've definitely been given that advice of, ooh, do you want to, like, is this the right title? Or if I were to stay here full time, like, is it a mm -hmm. step back? And in my mind, it's definitely not. Like, if you love what you're doing and you can tell the story of how it adds to your experience, mm -hmm. that's what's most important. I think sometimes focusing too much on title and this like ladder that we need to climb as opposed to like what brings you fulfillment what do you enjoy what are you going to be happy doing every day um mm -hmm. we can sort of lose sight of that as someone who like sometimes does climb that ladder a little bit i have to remind myself wait a second i'm in a, i'm doing what i love mm -hmm. like what what's more important than that yeah i can imagine because I, maybe the only thing better than like working there would be just to be there all the time. But then again, that'd probably get boring. So at least you're like involved in the, in all the things, all the decisions and, you know, you, you help, you know, mold this resort, which has got to be amazingly inspiring because you, you must be around the world's wealthiest celebrity celebrities, wealthy people. I mean, just the, the, the depth and breadth of the kind of people that come there um, just to even, you know, meet them and, and kind of see what their world is like. It's got to be fascinating. Yeah, it really is. And one of the projects I'm working on is, you know, storytelling for the property and putting a story behind the resort and a feeling that people um, have as they go through the property. So when they leave, it's not just, you know, the restaurants that they ate at, because we have 11 restaurants here, which is more, it's awesome. the 
more than any other resort in the Maldives and they're incredible mm -hmm. and like everything here is impeccable, but we also want to leave people with a feeling beyond that. And so that's one of the projects that I'm here working on. And so, you know, to be able to work with every team on property to bring it to life, it's, it's like any other company, you know, you have to get everyone on board with the idea and everyone behind the strategy for it to actually get up and running and to go smoothly. Um, so I actually think my partnership marketing experience is probably some of the most useful experience that I have because that's essentially what it is to get a program or a strategy up and running at a place like this or at a corporate office. Um, it's bringing everyone along with you, making everyone feel like they're a part of it, taking everyone's feedback, making sure you're taking the most important feedback and listening, like truly listening to everyone um, mm -hmm. to bring something like to life and, um, and figuring out like what makes people tick so that you can work together closely with them. Um, you know, we're always talking about like ROI and all these things, but at the end of the day, on any of these projects that are brand building, like you have to work so closely with lots of people. And if you can't figure out how to make the people portion of it work, like you're never gonna have an ROI. Like you won't even get to that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, just a, a random aside question that came to mind. Do you see a, a particular contingent of the world that comes uh, specifically to your resort or is it so global and everybody from everywhere? It's definitely global, but because of COVID, it's a little bit different. Um, so right now more Russia, um, you know, Middle East, the countries that can travel, like China can't travel. Typically there would be a lot of Chinese guests here. Um, Europe is still coming except for when they go into lockdown. So it sort of depends on what um, what's going on in these other countries and the U S also. Um, so it is global in nature, but some markets a little bit more than others. Yeah. Are, are a lot of people from the U S still coming or not so much? Um, there are definitely, um, people from the U S I'm actually the only American on staff, oh, wow. uh, cool. which I was really um, yeah, I, that's never been the case, uh, mm -hmm. but we definitely have, um, people coming from the U S as well. It's just, it's a further, it's further. Um, yeah. so like a little bit lesser so, but they're still mm -hmm. coming. Especially yeah. I, 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 I checked the, I checked the flights. I I'm, I'm trying to manifest this into reality. So it's going to be a while, but hopefully, hopefully someday. <laughs> it's not the flight wasn't so bad. The flight wasn't yeah. so bad. It's like a full day, right? Yeah, but by when you get here, you forget. You immediately, oh, like, I'll you step them. off the yacht yeah. and the property, and, like, you don't care how long. It could have taken you four days to get here, and it won't matter. Like, it's, everyone's like, is it as amazing as you see in the photos? Yes. You don't need filters here. You, like, the influencers use them. You don't need mm -hmm. them. Most everything yeah, is, like, perfect <laughs> on the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Well, let's, let's get it. Let's, um, let's dig into the work a bit. Like, I'd like to know you know, specifically, what are, what are some of your initiatives? What are you guys working on? What's exciting to you there? So the storytelling project is a big one um, and it hasn't launched yet. So I can't say exactly what it okay. is, um, but the idea of it is putting a story behind the resort um, to then create experiences that leave guests with a memory. So like a feeling that you have on property and similar to like when you breathe in the ocean air, you remember what that scent was you take it home with you like if you breathe in that scent somewhere else you're reminded of a vacation um i'm mm -hmm. creating experiences like that that sort of bring you back to the resort um mm -hmm. and bring you back to this idea of like magic and the feeling that you get when you're here because it truly is a magical feeling when you're on property so mm -hmm. i've been working on that there's restaurant that launched so I was working on the launch for that we had these two overwater villas that are standalone only accessible by boat um and so I was those working on amazing. a positioning exercise yeah they are truly incredible um mm. so working on positioning for those and influencer strategy and what you know what content does the sales team need because those are more typically sold by travel agents versus booking direct um, and looking at a very cohesive plan for these two villas that are such unique products on this property. Um, and then also looking at the 2021 spa strategy. And so I've been helping a lot with the higher level strategies while I'm here. 
And is there a, a larger team that you're working with or is it a lot of solo work? Yeah. Um, both. Yeah. Uh, there's a great team here that I rely on um, heavily. That's, you know, some mm -hmm. of them have been here from the, before this property even opened. Um, mm -hmm. I work closely with the sales team. For me personally, it was important while I was here to get a better understanding of the sales side of hospitality. Um, and so supporting the sales team is, has been really important to me as well because I want to get a better understanding of how it works. And I've been able to do that by working more closely with them and asking mm -hmm. them what they need and what I create that's going to help support their work. Um, so for these two overwater villas, for example, they needed better collateral brochures to, to sell this dream. And yes, the positioning is very important. So we know what to put in these brochures, but that's what they really need to sell it. So really like listening to the various teams on what they're needing and seeing how, based on my past experience, I can jump in and create things really quickly. Cool. And is, is corporate in America, is that sort of the hub that you kind of work to? Yeah. Um, yes. In the, uh, yes, there's also an office, uh, corporate office in APAC. Um, so the main headquarters is in the US, um, which is where I was working, but there's also a corporate office in APAC that we work a, a little bit more closely with here. Also with time difference, it makes it much easier as well. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, so you told me you were, you were previously the Senior Director of Global Brand Marketing and Partnerships, Luxury and Lifestyle. Uh, you were handling Waldorf, Conrad, Canopy. How does this experience differ from that or what, are there overlaps? Is it vastly different? Tell me about that. Um, I, you know, it's really interesting. So I put together the partnership between Waldorf Astoria and Aston Martin, um, oh, cool. which we activated globally. And, you know, we did glamping at the 24 hours of Le Mans and we were at Pebble Beach and we did activations on property. We brought the brand to life off property. Uh, there are so many different aspects of that partnership. And then, you know, I come in to meet with the GM on the first day and there's one of our Aston Martins with the logo on it, like sitting on his shelf. It's like, you see <laughs> things like that come to life on property um, mm -hmm. or one of the main photo shoots for the brand, uh, you know, the imagery is all over the property and it's like, oh my God, I remember when that was shot. Um, or like I worked on the brand magazines for Waldorf, for Conrad, um, and it was one of the, my favorite projects, like figuring out how to take a print magazine where the content was living and dying in print. No one mm -hmm. was that in favor of them and turn around to a digital first model and mm -hmm. create content that I could then use in my email marketing, be used on social media, um, and also then was fueling the digital magazine website and print as well. <laughs> Uh, but print being one of uh, the way the ways that we're distributing that um, content, not the only way. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you get to a property like there's the magazine. Um, mm -hmm. It's it feels really good to see all of it come to life here, um, mm -hmm. and then to be able to be a part of it and understand the brand, but work on these mm -hmm. various things. So now, it's, okay, with Aston Martin, how can we bring Aston Martin to life on this property? Uh, which was a little bit more difficult to do from corporate. It's obviously not mm -hmm. like, you know, when a property's first built and it's over water. Like the first thing you think of is not, how do I put a car <laughs> on that property? Yeah. Uh, I mean, are there even cars on the island? Opens the no, 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 no. This I island is, so. no, I bike to work. Yeah. yeah. No. We have a lot of golf carts, golf carts yeah. and bikes, um, mm -hmm. but no cars. Uh, cause the, like, <laughs> they can the put one off to the side, <laughs> say when, when you yeah. get back to the mainland, this is what you drive. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, no. So it's, and you know, when a property's first opening, like while they want to participate in a partnership like that, it's not necessarily feasible. Like there's so many things to do when a property is opening, but now we're at the point where we can actually look at that partnership and that relationship and see what's possible. That's going to really, um, create a moment in media, but also enhance the experience here. Like the kind of guests that we're catering to have garage fulls of these, you know, mm -hmm. supercars. And so being yeah. able to do something with a brand like that in a way that's like authentic to the Maldives is a very, mm -hmm. very uh, interesting project to work on. So because mm -hmm. I, you know, have those relationships, I'm able to bring it here and move it forward more quickly than, um, 
than I perhaps would have at corporate or than someone else would have if they didn't necessarily have that background. So there's mm -hmm. certainly like a lot of overlap, like even, you know, in the brochures that I'm doing, like the approach that I take to content is very much based in the email marketing that I've done for the brand. Like I have a better mm -hmm. sense of what works, what people click on, mm -hmm. what they're going to be interested to read. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think there's a little bit less trial and error um, mm -hmm. and I'm more confident in the work that I'm doing because I know it's also based in our brand pillars as well. Like I don't have to get caught up on all of that, um, mm -hmm. which is really important when it's a global brand to ladder back up to the master brand. Not mm -hmm. everything is the same, um, but there's certainly like some consistent elements mm -hmm. that because I have mm -hmm. that background, I can really keep that in mind. So I think that a lot of what I was doing, the reason that I can be successful here in a short period of time is because the things that I was doing in my last role, like di directly relate to what I'm doing here. Um, but I'm also the type of person that, you know, going from Bobble Bar to Hilton, like I could take that experience and directly relate it and mm. learn new things and get caught up very quickly, um, mm -hmm. but still find ways to build off what what I've done in the past because um, mm -hmm. I think that it's you know what every job is different but at the end of the day like we're not reinventing the wheel like we're coming up with new creative ideas but it, at its core a lot of things are um, can be uh, we can build upon the things that we've done previously mm -hmm. um, so with COVID obviously the the entire travel and hotel industry has been completely decimated um, obviously you guys seem to be an outlier. Um, I, are you, was there any period of time in the past year where the resort shut down or, or was that not even a thing? Um, yeah, the, it, last summer it did shut down for a while because Maldives, the Maldives shut down for a while, but since reopening, you know, there's not that many places that people can go to. And because this is a relative, like a safe destination and the mm -hmm. way that, you know, this property is treated COVID safety with all mm -hmm. of the COVID tests and mm -hmm. um, the social distancing and the way that the staff has to quarantine uh, mm -hmm. before they arrive. And then we're all, as staff, we're all masked up. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, very good place to go during a very bad time in the world. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that we were, you know, the property was able to make up for it, which is shown by the fact that they brought me in January. Like hospitality is not necessarily hiring right now, not mm -hmm. the, you know, best. When I left retail for hospitality, hospitality was like the best, safest possible mm -hmm. place you could go. You know, yeah. millennials and younger, everyone is spending money on experiences and not as Truly. many things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, no, obviously, no one could have seen this coming. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, hospitality is definitely like a challenging place to be in 2020 and mm -hmm. 2021. Um, so, I think I'm in a fairly unique situation that I ended up here during during this time. Yeah, and I'd imagine too that because of the nature of these, you know, standalone bungalows with their own pools and everything. Aside from the dining situation, there probably isn't too much congregating anyway, right? No, and even dining, a lot of people prefer to eat in their villas because they're so big and so spacious and there's like a full dining table outside plus mm -hmm. another table and the king beds and like you, mm -hmm. you never it's need to leave your villa <laughs> unless you want to. And the restaurants, mm -hmm. the restaurants, everything's outside. So even mm -hmm. when you do go out to the restaurants, you're sitting outside, you're distanced and mm -hmm. you're sitting outside. So the mm -hmm. chance of interacting with another guest is mm -hmm. pretty low. Like there's just not a lot of situations where you would. Um, it's not the mm -hmm. kind of property where people come to party. Um, <laughs> it's just, and, and actually like a, a lot of children as well, a lot of families, uh, okay. which was a surprise to me. Interesting. Um, and so uh, how has like the Maldives in general uh, treated COVID? Like when, when you arrive there, do you have to quarantine? Is there a mandatory quarantine period? As, yeah, as, as a guest? Quarantine for, um, as a guest, no. As a guest, no. you have to come with a negative PCR test. Um, gotcha. So they do require PCR tests. Um, and 
and that's something that they're like very, very strict on and there's no way around it. Okay, makes sense. Um, so I may butcher this, but let me try. Uh, tell us about if the Fushi, is that I say that right? Oh, the private island, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the private island, um, it's the largest private island in the Maldives. Um, you know, you can have 24 people can stay there. Um, and it has a beach villa, uh, an overwater villa, another four bedroom residence. And it's like a, an amazing playground in the Maldives. Um, and it, it goes for usually about between 75 and 85,000 a night. And, um, mm. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, people take it over because either they want safety because of COVID or they want privacy, um, but it's truly an incredible product and mm. in very high demand we launched and um, it's like the ultimate, the ultimate vacation. And I think it speaks a lot to the type of clientele that, that we have here as well. Mm -hmm. So is it never I empty? Guess. Yeah, really. Uh, it's very frequently taken and yeah people often stay for a while yeah like what's the longest you've seen I mean I've only been here since January 1st so mm -hmm. like it's hard for me to answer that question but people have yeah. been here for multiple weeks on end yeah oh my gosh that's incredible must be like royalty and all sorts of craziness <laughs> you're like I can't say but <laughs> you never know <laughs> that's cannot awesome confirm <laughs> you cannot confirm or deny <laughs> Uh, well, since I'm from a company called Influential, you knew I had to ask, what role do influencers and social media play in the marketing of the resort? Um, huge. I mean, social media, I think, is big for this aspirational piece of things. And I think like any company, there's the content creators and then there's like the true influencers. And they're both very important and they play a very different role. So for us, the content that like, you know, we're very frequently posting on social channels. The social team mm -hmm. here is incredible. Um, and they actually just won the Forbes Instagram account of the year. Um, Congrats. And so, yeah, it's, they're truly incredible. Um, and, you know, working with influencers, it, whether it was at Bobble Bar or at Hilton or here on property, it's the same. You have the influencers that create the most amazing content for you and you can use that content in your email marketing, on your own channels. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like truly brand building content. And those mm -hmm. people may or may not convert. For you. In the ideal world, it's both that they're converting for you and they're creating the most amazing content. But sometimes mm -hmm. you need a very specific type of content. Um, and sometimes you have influencers coming and in the case here, the influencers are like, celebrities like not mm. bloggers but like true celebrities who are very very influential and their audience want to want mm -hmm. to do what they're doing and can afford to do what they're doing and I think that's what's maybe a little bit different than um in retail for example like I think the true luxury fashion could probably be compared but when we're talking like normal fashion it's a little bit easier to find influencers whose followers can then afford to buy what these influencers are posting here. Like you really have to hit that high net worth audience or it's just for aspirational purposes. And I think that this property does a really great job of balancing the two so that, mm -hmm. you know, we have the content that we need and all of these marketing assets that we're working on, like that we have what we need to create the right type of content that is incredibly on brand, but then also mm -hmm. that the influencers who may not be creating the most perfect content, but are hitting the right audience are also mm -hmm. here. Um, so it's certainly a fine, a fine balance. Yeah. And I'd imagine with like the content creators, they're in this for the business of that. And they're like, use anything and everything. But when it comes to like true, like celebrity influencers, you probably have to let them speak for that, like let them post it. And that does everything. Like it, it would almost be tacky for a five-star resort or a Waldorf to be like, oh, look at Ronaldo is here or whatever it might be, you know? Yeah, definitely have to like yeah, walk that line. Yeah. And you like, like a content creator, you're giving like guidelines and shot lists and all of those things so that you get exactly what you need. You're not doing that with like true, true influencers. You know, mm -hmm. you create an itinerary and there's things that you want them to do, but mm -hmm. um, 
and experience and talk about, but not mm -hmm. in the same way that you're doing for content creators. Nice. And are you the kind of the core person that like handles the, all of that? Not in this consulting role currently. Um, I work with them for the strategies I'm working on, their specific content needs that I have, or, you know, for the Stella Marie's, these overwater villas, a big piece of this positioning is like the most romantic hideaway because uh, it's only accessible by boat. You know, your uh, breakfast is delivered daily. There's mm -hmm. a spa treatment under the stars all these things that make it the ultimate romantic getaway. And so then mm -hmm. as part of the amplification plan, we needed influencers who were couples who are in the right demographic to be creating this content for us because we don't want to hire, especially during COVID, like models to come in and do these shoots. So making mm -hmm. sure that we have the right influencer coming with the right shot list so then we can then turn it around quickly and make mm -hmm. all of these other assets. Um, it's one of the things that, that I just finished so the brochure that I was working on for the sales team, I needed the content from the influencers with this mm -hmm. new positioning in order to fuel the brochure. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, um, you know, it all, in a, if a marketing team is run really well, and I think they're doing a great job here, like everyone works very closely together so that it's the same thing when I was talking about our brand magazine and corporate, like either you have content that just lives in print or you work really closely with all of the teams that could possibly be using the content and you use data to figure out like what's the content that's most important. And then you're able to distribute it amongst all of these channels and become really efficient with the budget that you have. So if the person handling influencer is in a silo and they're not mm -hmm. thinking about like where else can this content be used? just our social media channel, then the budget is sort of wasted and we're not getting them out of it. So I think the more everyone works together, the more um, efficient we become and the, the, you know, the budget can be stretched much further. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I know you'd said it's a three month uh, consultancy, so it, it probably is coming to an end soon. Is there uh, a next plan on the horizon for you? Or, I mean, I would probably just try to stay. <laughs> I forgot about this question. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, ask, ask me in a week. Uh, there's always something coming up. Um, I predict you stay. <laughs> soon, yeah, follow, follow me on LinkedIn um, and perhaps there will be um, more updates soon. But for now, I can say this has been an incredible experience. Three months living on an island feels like three years. Um, it's a very interesting experience to live amongst your coworkers. And because mm -hmm. of COVID, um, because you have to, when you get here, like a lot of people haven't left the island in like six months a year, like a very, very long time. Typically on this yeah. island, we're only 45 minutes from LA, the main city where the international airport is. Typically you can, mm -hmm. at night after you're done working, you can take a speedboat into the city like get a manicure, do whatever you want to do, go out to dinner. You can go mm. to other nearby resorts for your day off, hang out at those resorts. Um, mm. But during COVID, no one can leave for safety. Um, and it makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, God forbid something happened. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want that. But once we're here, we're safe. Mm. So um, it's a really intense environment. Like I've never experienced anything like it. Um, it's good in that you get to know people really, really quickly. And so I've been able to do so much because I've gotten to know people so quickly. And um, the more people you know, the more you can get done. But it's it's like, not it's if you ever went to summer camp and then you were a summer camp counselor, it's sort of like yeah. that, but you're doing like real nonstop um, mm -hmm. collaborative work and it can be really mm -hmm. challenging. I'm sugarcoating it right now, but it can be very, very challenging. <laughs> I actually felt it through your words. I actually did. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's like a reality show. That's amazing. Yeah, obviously they would never film it, but it would be great if they did. <laughs> uh, is the island, uh, is yeah. there, I can't do that. <laughs> is the island solely the resort or is there anything else on it? Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing. No. Wow. But and the staff you, area you, has like a staff. No, 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 no. You can't. You can't. Oh uh, once, 
like people are starting to get vaccinated here and I think in a couple months it'll change and they'll reopen the island so that you can go to other resorts mm -hmm. you can go into Mali that's typically mm -hmm. what it's like and that's one mm -hmm. of the benefits of being at a resort that's close to Mali um, mm -hmm. to the main city but right now like no you can't mm -hmm. You, if you leave the island for anything, like even if you have to go, there's a doctor on property, but let's say you had to go to the doctor in the Sugar. main city yeah. for some reason, mm -hmm. you would have to quarantine for 10 days before coming back. And we do that for the safety of the guests. Makes so uh, it's really not possible to leave, um, but mm -hmm. this is very specific to go in a few months time. It'll be mm -hmm. much different and it'll be a totally different experience. Yeah, it almost sounds like uh, speed boats are like your Uber there. Yeah, today the team, the marketing team, we really wanted um, a cake, like a tiramisu <laughs> cake. And mm -hmm. so we ordered a cake from the main city and it was mm -hmm. delivered to us on our speedboat. Like we just arrived <laughs> on speedboat a few hours later. Well, yeah, I, I'm living in like a alternate reality where yeah. it's like the speedboat is the cool and the cake <laughs> just like shows up. We ordered like cake from Mars. Yeah, um, like so it's, idealistic it's very castaway. <laughs> yeah 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 but you have to have it in order to because it's not just you know in a normal office environment you go to work you do very good work and then you mm -hmm. go home and you can get away from it here you can't get away from it so you have to be like truly adaptable and um and have thick skin yeah i can imagine um, so we're almost out of time, but um, I read that you're a founding advisory board member of the Women Leading Travel and Hospitality. Can you tell us about this organization and its mission? Yeah, it's an incredible organization. I was actually on the board of the Women in Retail Leadership, which for me in um, retail was, in, I, I'm a strong believer in networking. Um, where I am in my career today is I can thank all of the people who helped me get here and who mentored me and, you mm -hmm. know, who helped lead me in the right decision and gave me guidance. And um, this is now an offshoot of that women in retail leadership organization, bringing together women in hospitality. Um, and I think it's so important for women to get together and discuss their challenges and to network and, you know, these networks really can make or break careers. And so I find it to be incredibly valuable and one of the best, the best ways that I can use my time because I learn so much from those around me and, mm -hmm. you know, being able to talk about other people, other people in your industry can be incredibly helpful. So for someone like me, you know, joining hospitality after years in e-commerce and retail, being part of an organization like this with, with a lot of hospitality veterans, learning from them, they're able to learn more from my retail experience. Like it strengthens everything that we do together. Um, mm -hmm. And they put out incredible content, um, really like help educate us on a regular basis. So I cannot recommend it enough. Women in retail leadership, if you're in retail or women leading hospitality. Super cool. And I, I know I, I read in your article, you had mentioned how um, experiences in groups like this, and, and you equated it, and this is a great way to, to tap out to Emily, is that you know experiences like this in groups, especially brand innovators, for example, that has enriched both you and I so much, uh, is really critical to building out your, your reputation and establishing yourself in an industry. Yeah, completely, I agree. It's well, true. Well, Thank you guys both so much. I, I loved your final note there, Nina, just on, you know, you've worked in so many different industries and how bringing those insights from one to the next is so valuable and getting to bounce those ideas off of other people. So really, really great to have you both here and we're jealous of you spending time in the Maldives right now. Um, but hope you guys have a good rest of your afternoon and thank you again for being here. Thanks, Nina. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Thanks.